what do you understand with this video? I can tell me. This is start from the beginning. Oil we uh, found until today. Uh, this audio, uh, this video has explained uh, since beginning. Can anyone explain what you understood by this? The history of uh, oil, sir, from where it began uh, and uh, the prices, the the increase of price, the inflation, sir, and uh, the countries taking part in production. Yeah, it was informative, sir. Yeah, it's very informative, right? So uh, uh, today, I think our, our Mr. Rajesh has explained to you uh, during this. Uh, uh, the whole month we will be covering uh, various uh, uh, topics on the which are related to oil and gas industry uh, basically we will be uh, dealing with oil and gas refinery storage terminals uh, oil and gas uh, refinery planning trading how it happens then reservation simulations uh, then we will have the oil drilling operation onshore offshore uh, then port we will have the uh, civil engineering uh, structures as well as uh, mechanical designs. So, as you know, uh, oil industry cannot be uh, operated only with the help of only petroleum engineers or chemical engineers or process engineers. To build the refinery, we need civil engineers, we need the mechanical engineers. Uh, so, uh, all the engineering streams are required in engineering. Uh, in, in oil and gas sector. So, what we designed this course that most of the student or their parent know that mechanical engineer will have scope only in uh, some manufacturing unit or some design unit and all these things or automotive industry. Civil engineer uh, think that he's having the scope only in real estate or construction or uh, some uh, contract or road. No, there is a huge scope for civil engineers mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, and uh, chemical, all the engineers are required in oil and gas sector. Not only engineers, even normal graduates, under uh, BCom, BA, BSc, uh, IIM graduate, uh, MBAs. So, so all type of uh, the uh, manpower is required to manage the entire organization uh, because uh, so we need all the expertise. Uh, the organization cannot run with only single expertise. We require multiple, multiple uh, expertise and multiple multi-dimensional uh, uh, expertise required. Then only organization function uh, professionally. So uh, during this entire course, we will be taking you all the topics. And at the end, you will understand uh, that, okay, uh, why, by participating in these uh, sessions, uh, you have got the in-depth in -depth knowledge of uh, the oil and gas sector. So you will be in a position to make up your mind at the end of the session that, yes, I want to focus and join uh, oil industry. So during this session, we'll also tell you why, why this uh, oil industry is very uh, lucrative. Because as compared to other industries, the oil industry uh, pays you very high packages, high salaries. Plus, it is a very respectable job. There are various uh, good opportunities to uh, go abroad uh, in Middle East and UK, US, uh, Venezuela, or, uh, or Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Brunei. Wherever oil is there, there is a huge scope for uh, the engineering stream people to, uh, to get the job there. How to get the job there? This is what we are going to teach you during these sessions. Okay, so uh, we'll prepare your mind uh, to towards it. Okay, so even though you are doing uh, uh, PG or uh, or uh, undergraduate or PG, it doesn't matter. Even if you are in first year or second year or uh, final year, that doesn't matter. We will be teaching you very simple methodology, our practical experience. Uh, this is a practical experience sharing with you. You are, you are learning the basic fundamental of uh, engineering in different, different uh, streams. But we will be transforming our practical experience to you. Okay? This will be totally interactive session. Whatever questions you have, you have to keep asking us. Get yourself clarified. And we will move on. 
okay another point i will uh, tell you uh, that is um, you will get the external exposure so with this exposure you will be in a position to stand uh, in front of uh, any uh, once you finish your graduation or post graduation you can stand in front of the interview people uh, the panel uh, who will be taking your interview and once you say we have gone through this training uh, uh, you can show your project report at the end of the session you will uh, have to prepare a project report on the entire session we will guide you how to do that also once they see your project report and once you uh, when they start asking you question you will be uh, in a position to explain uh, all the questions raised by them very confidently so this is what uh, the preparation so the fee what we are charging is very minimal uh, the experience what we have uh, and uh, we can charge lakhs of rupees but especially uh, for the younger generation being a entrepreneurs uh, being a industry people we thought uh, practically we would have given you free but uh, the tendency if you give anything free it doesn't have value that's why we charge this minimum fee which is, which if you go anywhere in the world you will not find uh, uh, the the amount of exposure we will be giving you uh, during the sessions multi dimensional uh, streams will be explaining to you you will get excellent exposure and uh, at the end of the session you will tell me sir really we got uh, a lot of knowledge through this session okay so i'll not take much time uh, we'll keep on discussing uh, regularly now uh, today uh, i will be uh, giving you the entire um, uh, understanding of oil and gas sector okay what is upstream what is midstream what is downstream okay so i'll just give you complete uh, so today we'll take uh, that session uh, tomorrow we will have the complete refining then we'll have the project management i would also like to teach you how to build the refinery your time is very short but i will make sure you will get all the fundamental and uh, this thing uh, to build the refinery also from uh, concept designing stage to uh, construction to management to startup to maintenance so all the steps i will be explaining to you how to build the refinery if you want to become entrepreneur and from you at one point of time uh, say after 5 year or 10 year if you think that yes i have somebody to invest in me and i want to start some refinery so this knowledge will help you okay so uh, believe me i will give you the complete rundown how to build the refinery you, you will know what type of exposure you will be getting in this short period okay so today i will cover you with the uh, uh, understanding of oil and gas sector uh, which is uh, upstream midstream and downstream so just have patience i'll run with the ppt i am audible hello yes sir yes sir yeah, yeah. be participate you ask me a question at the end of the session always now keep this uh, patient see uh, inter expert we are the feeding the future uh, breakthrough in oil and gas sector that is our motto here okay who who has organized the plus 40 years experienced people who are the owners who are the entrepreneurs uh, who has organized this uh, uh, internship program for you especially for you okay this is a oil uh, uh, this is uh, this is the uh, online internship program so we'll take session uh, today and tomorrow on this if you see here upstream midstream downstream in the first block if you see the drilling operation okay you can see all the uh, rigs are there okay uh, offshore rig onshore rig so okay so this is called upstream then production uh, so once you do the complete drilling then your production starts so you, if you see here um, the all the production facilities uh, uh, the crude oil gathering uh, areas are there okay so you, you see in the second block then transport so whatever production uh, happens you transport through uh, via ship or through pipeline uh, to the uh, storage area okay and then from storage area it goes to uh, 
uh, downstream area where the refining takes place. Uh, and during the refining, whatever product refined, it goes to for distribution to the uh, different different depots, terminals, uh, end user, buyers, industries. So this is how the entire upstream, midstream, and downstream. Uh, in one uh, diagram, uh, you understood initially that when, when you do the drilling operation, uh, during drilling, then you do the production. Uh, after the production, it goes to the storage area by pipeline and this thing, and then goes to refining. And then from refinery, uh, you get all the finished products. From crude oil, you get all the uh, LPG, naphtha, jet, kerosene, uh, diesel, furnace oil, uh, bitumen, some lubricant oils. And from, so uh, this is a complete uh, cycle. Okay. So I'll just give you the brief on the upstream. What is upstream area? What is upstream means? If you see here, you can see the offshore oil platform here. Huh? So in this platform, if you see the complete structures are there, where uh, exploration and production of the um, in 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 upstream, you uh, you focus uh, on exploration and production. Then do, in this you do drilling and unconventional upstream. Okay upstream business characteristics and key players in the upstream. So these are the five point uh, covers in upstream area. What is upstream? Most of the oil and gas companies are organized according to business segment assets or uh, function. So upstream is what? Engine exploration and production. Okay. So this, uh, this is a business segment uh, called uh, exploration and production. Upstream is can you tell me what is upstream? Anyone, can you just tell me, please? What is upstream? Exploration and production. Yeah. So this is the sector. Uh, so this is the initial. Okay. So uh, when you want to start uh, uh, doing the uh, first, you do the studies and all. I'll go go with this. Okay. Uh, so where to locate them? How deep and how far uh, drilling operation take place? How to design, construct, and operate and manage them? Okay, so in this upstream, uh, you do all these things, uh, uh, all these studies and everything. Okay, so uh, so ex exploration involves what operator uh, obtaining leads from the owner of the offshore. So what do you mean by this? See, uh, all the oil blocks uh, or oil uh, locations, uh, the, it belongs to government. Any government, whether you take to India or uh, anywhere in the world. The locations are uh, belong to government. So what happen? Government they do the auction, uh, or they do the uh, invite the tenders from the uh, different different uh, crude oil or uh, drilling operators or owners or refiners, and they do the bidding. And through bidding, they get the oil block uh, areas. And once they get the oil block areas, they then they do all the um, the operator uh, what they do. Uh, they conduct the geolog geological and geophysical surveys to determine the first well site, which is called wildcat well. Okay, so so, so during this exploration stage, uh, these are the studies that are taken place. Geological, geophysical surveys are taken. Okay, and uh, then only they go to the next because unless and until you do the proper study, uh, you cannot go to next level and straight away you cannot start doing digging the or drilling the operation, you have to do the basic survey first. Basic, uh, 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 the uh, complete data, everything has to be collected. Whether the site, what is selected, the oil block, what is selected, you will have the sufficient oil to do the drilling operation. Because drilling operation is a huge uh, investment. You have to do the multi-dimensional, multi-million uh, investment is required. So prior doing the drilling operation, you have to do the uh, proper uh, studies that is, happens only in exploration stage. Then you go to drilling. Once you finish uh, the drilling, uh, the exploration, you go for drilling. So drilling is what physically creating the bar holes, bore holes in the ground. Okay. So if you see here in the picture, this is how the uh, bore holes are uh, are, uh, are are done by the uh, drilling operators. Okay at the ground and uh, so this work is done by the rig contractors so so when i explained to you earlier what is the scope for civil engineer or mechanical engineer 
this is where the mechanical as well as civil engineers uh, work as well as uh, chemical and uh, petroleum engineer so it's a combination of all the engineering stream they work in this drilling operations so we have scope here also all the engineering uh, student have the excellent uh, scope in uh, drilling operation as well as in uh, exploration stage also so drilling is the physically creating the bore hole okay so this is what i explained to you so in uh, drilling program is prepared by a drilling engineer that consist of a drilling rig to be used for the well what type of drilling rig is required proposed location for drilling uh, hole sizes and depths casing sizes and depth drilling fluid specification directional drilling information well control equipment and procedures bits and hydraulics uh, programs so these are the uh, uh, the drilling engineer has to work out uh, all these operations and then only they give go for drilling operations so you will you will have more uh, detail uh, during uh, dr uh, rajesh kumar he will be taking on oil drilling operation he will give you more in details okay i will be just giving you overview now then uh, after drilling is then you, you start producing so production is where the reserves are converted into cash okay so if you see here this is the well and this is how the pumping oil pumping is going on at the uh, well area so production is where the reserves are converted into cash means, means the oil reserves means whatever is there in the ground uh, crude oil it is being extracted or by pump uh, pump and which will be converted into cash means this is your cash flow you can you start generating the cash flow through when you start producing the oil but until the um, exploration and uh, the drilling stage you are only spending the money but during production once you start getting the oil you start generating the revenue for the organization what are the basics of uh, emp exploration drilling and production these are the basics so uh, there are different types of uh, drilling operation takes place you know horizontal drilling hydraulic fracturing subsea engineering so uh, there are different different types are there this is called hydraulic uh, fracturing means hydraulic fracturing or fracking is the process of injecting water chemicals and sand into the wells huh? this resulting Uh, fractures in the surrounding rocks formation to allow hydrocarbon to escape if you do the fracking uh, if you see here uh, is escape the oil uh, from that and then you start uh, pumping to the uh, uh, pumping through the pipe okay so uh, you have to inject what sand water and some additives and then uh, you do the fracturing and uh, once you fracture uh, you get uh, rock formation to allow uh, hydrocarbons to flow so the, uh, in hydro, hydro, hydraulic fracturing this is the operation takes place if you see here there are uh, this is called offshore okay offshore drilling so there are deep water drillers drilling uh, uh, drilling operations takes place like um, uh, 1000 to 3000 or 4000 uh, uh, meters uh, you have to go deep uh, to explore the oil and how it does uh, you have to keep you have to uh, Uh, create the structures uh, this way to do the drilling operation because here in deep water uh, you have to have the storage everything uh, along with the uh, uh, drilling operation area there. so what is the uh, estimated time frame for uh, uh, exploration and production normally uh, from exploration to production uh, what is the time frame okay so if you see uh, once you get the oil block what do you do first you do the due diligence uh, then pre qualification happens then you do the study so first 3 to 5 years is goes into due diligence pre qualification exploration and seismic studies site survey so first 3 to 5 years uh, any uh, operator who, uh, what happens they, these are the uh, steps uh, first 3 to 5 years they have to go through this then next 4 to 5 years then you start exploring exploration of drilling and uh, drilling operation then uh, one uh, then appraisal drilling and development so once you found the oil uh, then you start doing the drilling operation then next phase is once you found the oil uh, you started production so normally each oil well will uh, last uh, for 10 to 30 years depending on the uh, how the uh, production flow comes 
okay so this is the life of the uh, any oil wells uh, in between you have to do the maintenance you have to do the uh, injecting the uh, different gases and uh, reactivate uh, the uh, oil wells so that uh, sometimes what happens during the production after 5 years or 10 years the production depletes so what you have to do you have to uh, uh, you have to act reactivate those oil wells and uh, you start getting the more production so these are the uh, time frame uh, from uh, exploration to production area upstream business characteristics uh, see it is a high risk high risk and high return why it is high risk because uh, upstream uh, what happens sometimes you have done the exploration and drilling but you have not found the oil so whatever investment has happened uh, in goes into west so it is called high high risk why why it is high return because uh, if you uh, if you have taken the oil oil blocks and you started getting the uh, oil uh, immediately uh, without any hassles that means uh, you got the lottery so uh, it is a high return so that means you started flowing the oil uh, so it is a high return also then highly regulated means the uh, this area is highly regulated means it is under the control of the government any government through government only these oil blocks are taken impact by global political politics see uh, the the uh, what happen globally uh, if you see lot of uh, politics are going on so uh, it is it has a uh, high impact on uh, this so most of the time if anybody want to do the upstream operation they think uh, whether uh, any situation in the politics will change uh, there will be war or there will, there will be any uh, issues so uh, uh, the people have to take very precautionary measure to take oil blocks uh, for production and exploration and all okay is a totally in technology intensive okay so uh, you require high uh, technology to assess uh, whether the oil uh, uh, oil will be found or not uh, so it is very uh, technology intensive you have to be very very careful that's why we need experts like you once you once you enter into oil industry whether you are a chemical uh, civil uh, you will learn this uh, and uh, within a 5 year or 10 year you become expert so uh, so the our organization depend on your skills how you assess uh, the uh, the studies and based on the studies uh, you'll be in a position to ascertain whether this oil will uh, oil block will give you the oil or not so it is totally on technology uh, intensive uh, upstream business who are the players in uh, uh, upstream there are majors okay majors like um, uh, uh, this uh, like uh, chevron or ongc or uh, uh, caltex uh, exxon mobil bp shell uh, now reliance is there in india kane energy so these are the majors are there then noc like national oil companies like hindustan petroleum indian oil uh, then uh, adna abu dhabi national oil company emirates national oil company kuwait Nas uh, national oil companies qatar uh, national oil companies uh, like uh, so these are the nocs uh, independent there are some private player also who are uh, in this uh, oil uh, production area then uh, oil field services oil field services is very important role you will have a tremendous opportunities in oil field services area all the engineers because uh, if you see most of the oil um, uh, this uh, productions and all is uh, oil field services companies take the jobs they are the major contractors for the production as well as for the services and the supplies so uh, this is the major area these are the majors like chevron reliance exxon mobil nocs like saudi aramco ongc and all independents like Conoco Phillips, Marathon Oil, oil field services like Halliburton, Schumberger, and all these companies. So these are the companies. What they do? Uh, they do the exploration, drilling, uh, testing, producing, and maintaining. So these are the players may plays a major uh, role. So you have a very good scope in these uh, companies also. Okay. So you have uh, scope in uh, all the engineering people have the scope in major oil companies. Uh, national oil companies uh, independents and the oil field services so 
uh, think uh, on this. Uh, see, you don't have only scope only in uh, NOC. You have there are four major areas uh, which I explained to you. You will have uh, entry in these uh, majors, NOCs, independent oil field services. Initially, you can go as a uh, uh, as a intern. Then you can uh, enter as a management trainee. Once you finish your training, they will accept you for uh, uh, the proper position. Then your career starts. So you have huge uh, a scope in these four uh, uh, areas, four players. So you, you are uh, you know what is crude oil? Okay, there are hundreds of different of crude oil. No? Uh, crude oil, there are various crude. See, uh, Bombay High crude is a different quality specification than the Middle East crude. Uh, there is a different uh, uh, quality of crude in Venezuela, uh, in uh, US, uh, Brunei. Each country will have different different uh, uh, specification of the crude. Mainly the crude are uh, light crude, medium crude, and heavy crude. Okay. So it depends on the density of the crude, API of the crude uh, is uh, derived, uh, how, what is uh, light, what is medium, and what is uh, heavy. Okay. So uh, if you see here, light crude oil produce higher percentage of gasoline. So uh, when you process light crude, you get maximum light product like gasoline and diesel. And, and if you uh, process uh, heavy crude, you get mostly the uh, furnace oil or heavy products. So I think uh, I have covered uh, upstream uh, in uh, brief. Now we'll go to midstream. Okay. So what is the mid midstream? Uh, midstream oil and gas segment uh, encompasses facilities and process of. See what happened? Uh, whatever oil is produced uh, in upstream area, it comes to midstream. So what happened uh, in this midstream? Uh, it uh, it gathered. It comes to gathering station storages. So if any uh, uh, poisonous gases are there, or uh, sand, or anything, uh, during the, in, in this uh, midstream area, you do the processing. And uh, then whatever, uh, after the processing, you then you transfer to the uh, downstream for further uh, refining process. So uh, in this uh, uh, midstream uh, is a totally processing, storage, and transportation. Uh, processing, transportation, and um, so this is the um, key area of uh, this midstream. See, midstream is a low risk business because uh, whatever risk was there is already covered in upstream area. So they have done the production upstream and now the product has come to midstream. So it's a low risk business. Uh, contains regulated components. Okay, so whatever uh, you are getting the product, crude oil or from, which you are getting in this midstream. Depends on health of uh, upstream. Okay, so uh, it depends on midstream, it depends on the upstream. So grass prices affect the demand. Okay, so whatever prices are there in the market, so there is a supply demand position. So accordingly, prices changes. What are the characteristics of uh, midstream segment? Uh, Midstream segment is considered a low risk business. Okay, I explained to you just now. See, who are the uh, participants in uh, midstream? Like there are companies like Gale India, Kinder Morgan, Enbridge, Trans Canada, uh, then William uh, companies. So these are the companies that are mainly uh, in midstream participants and uh, who are working in midstream areas. So international company like Kosh or uh, so these are the companies that are expert in distribution, storage, processing, fractionation, and marketing. Okay. So as I explained to you, uh, midstream is a uh, uh, whatever crude comes uh, from the uh, upstream, uh, it gathers in the uh, in this area and they do the complete processing okay it's not refining only processing uh, what is the processing means uh, as it is oil comes in this area and you do the you do the complete separation of sand muck and all you remove the high poisonous gases in this uh, you uh, separate all these things and then uh, then the uh, proper crude oil is um, is transported to uh, downstream area 
okay and how you transport this to refinery and all through uh, wagon or through pipelines okay uh, or uh, through the truck mainly it goes via ship or pipeline or wag rail wagons if you hear these are the natural gases during the processing what happen you cover natural gases also so you recover and that you put into the storage and you transport that to the for the actual uses so there are a lot of natural gases also uh, during the process uh, you recover so that's why it is called ngl you know natural gases then you get also lng okay during this process you get lot of uh, lng and uh, uh, you recover that and you supply to the for uh, energy purposes for energy usage purposes these are the lng tanks see storage of crude oil see normally what happens all the uh, once uh, entire uh, crude uh, from midstream uh, this is uh, gathered in the uh, midstream area okay so uh, so you get a properly processed crude in this area and then it goes to refinery for uh, refining purposes you can see the presentation hello yes sir this is it yes sir yes sir yes sir just hold on ah uh. what what happened this one minute huh? there is a ppt got stuck okay sir in the arrow huh arrow the ppt got stuck huh? just hold on a huh? few minutes sure sir no problem शटडाउन कर शटडाउन कर Ajay, yeah, yes, sir. Ah, uh, just few minutes, sir, because my PPT got uh, shared, uh, stuck. Okay. Just, um, uh, just explain to them about uh, uh, upstream uh, until I finish uh, this. Yeah, okay, thank you. i'll play one video uh, regarding the offshore uh, 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 complex structures and the platforms so like uh, it will get a good uh, insight on that uh, so how the ongc and a major oil companies on uh, the offshore they play All across. 
Gas ONGC, the National Oil Company of India. Safety has always been the foremost concern, as ONGC is primarily in the business of oil and gas, both of which are highly inflammable and dangerous. Safety first being the organization-wide motto, ONGC perseveres to upgrade and update its safety mechanisms round the clock at various installations and office complexes. In consonance with this thrust of safety, B193 Process Complex stands out as the lighthouse of safety, where state-of-the-art safety measures are in place in the face of all kinds of environmental adversity. And <laughs> with them, with the ultrasound gas handling capacity, the platform is designed to produce 42,000 barrels of sound liquid and 1.1 million standard cubic meters of gas per day. The SAR oil and gas production in the platform commenced in the year 2014. And since then, safe practices have been in place and followed meticulously on this unique platform, beginning with the arrival at Elitech. Designed to house a crew of 70, it has exemplary safety measures to handle all kinds of unwarranted eventuality for the safety of the men on board, as well as that of the infrastructure. With an installed offshore acid gas removal and acid gas disposal system, it can handle SAR gas of concentration as high as 40,000 ppm of H2S an achievement unparalleled globally. But at this concentration of H2S, fatality can occur in seconds. Unique and exclusive initiatives taken on the platform include Fire and Safety Training Center, which has cut open models and displays of breathing apparatus, fire and gas detection system, helicopter rescue kit, knots and hitches, fire extinguishers, life raft, PPEs or personal protective equipment, deluge valve, different fireman suits. The center also has working models of fire extinguishing systems of all types, including foam, water, CO2 and DCP. Besides having fire tetrahedral and other visual aids, Case studies of major disasters in offshore worldwide are briefed in the training center in order to make everyone aware of the importance of safety. The main objective of the fire safety training center is to provide hands-on experience of using water spray system, personnel basket, jumping rope, scramble net, life raft, hydrant monitor system for the personnel and the platform. Onboard crew is regularly trained to use life-saving appliances, firefighting systems, and various safety equipment like self-contained breathing apparatus and other PBEs. B193 has developed its own access control protocols, which include a buddy system and a docket card system for emergency mustering to ensure headcount of persons working in process area and to restrict unauthorized access. The platform has H2S Safe Shelter, a temporary refuge for people working in the high-risk area in case of unlikely event of release of toxic H2S and SO2 gas. The platform has emergency response stations in the field in which all firefighting safety and medical items are placed to cater to the emergency. Display of standard operating procedures is in place across the length and breadth of the process complex. Taking the lead in offshore, the platform conducts ambient air quality parameters survey every alternate month to ensure that ambient air parameters are well within limits for working personnel. Even mock drills are carried out at regular intervals to check the preparedness of any eventuality as per offshore petroleum industry training organization. 
OBITO standards and has become a way of life at B193. Be it human or mechanized resources, safety first has been and will continue to be the priority at B193 and across ONGC, which has always endeavored to care for all its assets throughout its timeline of existence. So this was a, a example of ONGC video. So it is our India's uh, public sector companies, one of the national oil company. And this B193 platform is the largest and most complex platform of our India. So the major production of our India oil and gas from the upstream sector is through this rig platform. So likewise, there are so many complex uh, uh, structures are there. Uh, so sorry, there was a technical error uh, in uh, Gawaisa's PPT. So I think now it is okay. So I request uh, Dr. Bhavan Gawaisa to raising the PPT. It is visible now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry for interruption. I think uh, you enjoyed the video, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, whatever I am covering, yes, uh, it is okay. Uh, anything going into the head? Is yes, clear? Sir. Huh? yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, we finish up the. Yes, okay. I will share this PPT with you, so you will have more details uh, in your... Uh so we were here, okay. So midstream segment, these are the uh, uh, four different different uh, segment uh, of the uh, midstream we covered. So uh, the midstream segment, uh, is considered a low risk business. As I told you, why it was low risk? Because uh, the entire, whatever investment is happening in the upstream, and uh, from there you are bringing the um, oil. So you are getting ready made oil from upstream uh, to do the processing, and then it is uh, transported to the uh, refinery. Okay. These are the international companies who does uh, uh, these uh, misting operations. So here in these such type of companies also you have a high scope, very good scope to join. So these are the, uh, in India, I'll say, tell you, uh, these are the such type of crude oil you might have seen the tanks. Uh, if you get time, once the COVID-19 finishes, we can organize some meeting in refinery visit also in future, uh, either in uh, Cochin or, uh, or in India. So definitely we can organize. Uh, so this is the strategic storage capacities of India. In Vaisakha Pratnam, we have 1.4 million tons of uh, crude capacity I'm talking. Then uh, Mangalore, uh, Karnataka is about 2.5. Uh, then Odisha, 4.5 million tons. See, why we have to have the static storage uh, capacity? Because uh, for the emergencies like war or any epidemics or anything, uh, you should have the static storage uh, to cover uh, the if any uh, eventualities. So we should have the storage for at least, uh, in India at least it is for 21 days, but in uh, foreign countries it's like uh, 40 days and all. So India also is increasing their uh, static storage capacity slowly. Uh, when I started my career, it was uh, not very much. But now, uh, the slowly, uh, all the government are investing money in uh, storage areas. Storage capacities are increasing and they are importing and storing. So uh, the country, people will not face any problems uh, if any eventuality is there. Okay. So these are the uh, 
storage areas. Uh, natural gas storages are like these. These are the uh, these are called capsules. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, see uh, from the uh, upstream. Uh, if you see here, uh, these are the uh, different different segments. I will explain you through the diagram. See crude oil from well on uh, on land. Okay. So this is the jack up re, uh, jack jack pump. You know. So this is how the pumping takes place. Uh, from here, uh, it goes through pipeline. It goes to the storage area. Okay. Uh, then from storage area, it goes to refinery. Then from refinery. It processes and goes to the uh, for usage. So this is a complete diagram of uh, the entire process. Okay. Then now I will go to the downstream. Okay. Uh, from upstream, uh, we have done the exploration and production. At the midstream, we did the processing and transportation and separation of uh, the uh, uh, the proper oils. Now uh, the we got the crude oil which is uh, ready for refinery. Okay. So uh, in downstream, uh, processing happens. Uh, processing and transporting and selling refined products made from the crude oil. In, in downstream, the entire crude oil processing happens. Okay. So oil, oil refining, then supply, uh, trading, product marketing, and retail. These are the uh, major function of the uh, downstream operation. What is refining? Refining produces a wide range of fuel like. Uh, and which are used for what? Uh, for automotive transportation, industry, then electric uh, generation purpose you require like for furnace oil and diesel or gases, uh, heating oils, then you require petrochemical uh, production and uh, so many thousands of uh, uses are there for the oil. So in refining, um, all this uh, uh, process takes place uh, from crude oil to uh, you get different different products, okay? Uh, like uh, LPG, naphtha, gas oil, and all. So, uh, in uh, refining, all this uh, process takes place. So, once you do the refinery uh, refining, it goes to uh, uh, for supply, trading, and transportation. Okay. So, so what happened in supply? Uh, how the supply happens? Because once you do the uh, refining, it goes to the storage area. From storage, uh, then depending on the country's requirement. Uh, see, for example, India is the huge country. So you have uh, north, east, west, south, and we have many refineries are there. So normally, the supply <coughs> uh, takes place of the petroleum products on the regional basis. For example, if you have refinery in Bombay, uh, Mumbai, uh, from Mumbai, uh, it caters entire Maharashtra, Karnataka, and some product goes to the uh, uh, up to uh, this thing, uh, Karnataka, Goa, and uh, it goes up to the Vizag also. Because uh, in Bombay, the refining capacity is high uh, as compared to other states. So Vizag, even though they have the refinery, the, uh, the demand is high, so you have to uh, transport product through pipeline or as by uh, road or by uh, ship. Uh, so this is called supply. Okay, from uh, refinery you produce, uh, it goes to the oil storage area. From oil storage area you supply uh, through pipe, pipeline or by truck or by ship. So that is called uh, supply. So uh, the all the product like diesel, uh, kerosene, uh, LPG, furnace oil, all the products are being uh, supplied to all over India, and whatever excess is available, it is exported to the uh, foreign countries. So, for example, in India, uh, we don't have that much, but mainly we export uh, naphtha, uh, which uh, sometimes is the excess. Uh, uh, say, for example, in um, ONGC, we have a lot of naphtha coming up, and uh, uh, now because of Reliance, uh, we have huge. Uh, uh, refining capacity. So, ONGC exports naphtha. Uh, sometimes we export uh, naphtha from Mangalore refinery also. So, uh, it happens. That is called trading. So, and uh, so those uh, trading uh, operations have also taken place. Then, 
So as I explained to you earlier, there's the exploration and production and crude oil storage, uh, then logistic, it's happened, then import, it goes to refinery, uh, so usages. So these are the different, different uh, product you get, gasoline, diesel, jet. See, gasoline is used for what? For the petrol pump. Diesel is used for the uh, petrol pump as well as for the uh, industries also are using. Jet fuel is used for the uh, aeroplanes. Uh, then uh, you get uh, this uh, uh, ethanol and uh, additives blended. So that also goes to the diesel pool. Okay. Then retail, uh, like uh, retail storages. Okay. So these are the uh, usage of oil from refinery. You, uh, so it goes to the uh, power plant also. Uh, some oil like furnace oil you use for power plants or sometimes you use uh, naphtha also sometimes you use gas LPG uh, for uh, power plants so these are the different different products we uh, supply uh, to different different uh, usages then you get uh, the uh, how the uh, the mode of transportation is uh, if you see here at the right extreme right uh, there is a pipeline uh, rail ship and by road so the different uh, types of uh, transportation uh, logistical operations are happens then marketing and retail see after the product is refined uh, then it goes for marketing uh, from the storages so it goes to the petrol pump for uh, diesel and petrol and uh, cng and lpg and all selling so it, it is called marketing okay then processing of natural gas also uh, takes place and it goes to the consumers for the uh, natural gas uh, for uses for the power plant and other industries. The uh, business characteristics of downstream and uh, oil and gas. See, it is a margin business. See, what do you call margin business means in when you refine the products, you know, what do you get? Crude oil. See, for example, you are getting crude oil at say, uh, $50 per barrel and you sell uh, say uh, keros, uh, the gasoline, say petrol, you sell at $60 per barrel. So what is the refinery margin in here? Uh, 50 and 60. So $10, $10 is the refinery margin. That will be the revenue what refinery gets. So, uh, so this is a margin business. Refinery is a margin. It is always work on the refining margin business. So they have to be very careful, careful while buying the crude uh, or by, while uh, from the international market or from the uh, local market. So they have to see the uh, international prices, whether they are in line with their refinery margin or not. Before buying any crude for refinery, they do the proper uh, the simulation for proper uh, uh, study and they play whether uh, the uh, whatever crude yields we get uh, and the, the product we get out of the yield, um, they are uh, revenue, they are generating the revenue, they are profitable. Okay, so, uh, so refining is a margin business. Very complex means refinery, if you see all the refinery units are very complex refinery. In refinery, there are different, different units are there, which I will be explaining tomorrow. Uh, so uh, different, different units are there like the distillation units are there, hydrocracker, then you have FCCU, platformer, uh, VDU, uh, isomerizer, uh, very complex refinery there. Because then uh, that's why, uh, so if you see the entire unit, it is in 50 or 100 acre land, entire refinery you see. But if it's, there are so many uh, small, small units inside, uh, they produce different, different products. Okay. Uh, then, uh, Refining is a global perspective is very important while uh, setting up the refinery uh, plan, a refinery unit, uh, you have to see the global perspective whether uh, if you uh, have the refining, additional refining capacity in any particular state, whether uh, it will give the uh, proper margin, proper business uh, profits or not. So it is a highly uh, global perspective we have to see whether supply demand position is uh, in line. Okay, it is a fierce driven demand. So uh, it is depends on the how much uh, fuel it is. It is uh, it, the entire refinery is depend on the supply demand position. Uh, 
so if we have the demand then only refinery gets excellent margin if you don't have the demand for the product then you cannot run the refinery at 100% so uh, you, if you don't run a refinery at 100% then your profit margin goes down so you have to be very careful while uh, planning your refinery in any particular region so these are the areas uh, which i have uh, covered uh, today see if you hear if you see i just explained to you uh, downstream segment is a business characteristics like diagram is a margin business okay margin is defined as the difference between the price realized for the product produced from the crude oil and the cost of the crude delivered to the refinery okay which i explained to you uh, so 50 dollar we are buying and selling at 60 dollar that is the refinery business. then the price of crude oil set the absolute level of product prices it may or may not affect refining or uh, marketing uh, margins okay the downstream margin tend to be reduced or squeezed when crude price increases often cannot be recovered in the marketplace that means uh, see uh, as per the international prices uh, the uh, daily prices are published okay so uh, when any refinery buy the crude oil uh, they have to make sure when the when they buy uh, the, there is a supply demand uh, situation is there or they have to uh, the the crude oil prices what they are buying uh, uh, is in line with the uh, uh, domestic requirement also so it is a very uh, you have to do the proper studies and then you plan your crude oil uh, uh, import and or processing okay uh, so these are the uh, uh, basic uh, this thing. So now uh, I think I will ask you the questions. Uh, we have covered very fast, but uh, you tell me what is the uh, upstream, what is midstream, what is uh, downstream. Just I have given you the uh, just overview of uh, what is the oil and gas sector. Okay. Tomorrow, I will go in detailing what is a refinery, uh, how the refining take place, uh, process. Okay. So based on the uh, today's uh, discussion, let us have the, we have 15 minutes for interactive session. I want to understand you also, uh, because I don't want to continue to talking. You will feel bored. Okay. So um, uh, let me have the interaction with you. Uh, you have any questions? I am ready to answer you. If you have any clarification, let us exchange our uh, thoughts. Okay? Please. Okay, my dear friend. Uh, see, we are here uh, to learn. Okay? Don't, yes, get, sir. don't be shy. See, if uh, unless you ask, nobody will give you. Okay? Always in life, uh, you have to ask. You have to uh, get the knowledge. Uh, so, uh, if you keep quiet, uh, nobody will come at your door and uh, give you something, right? In the same way, knowledge is also like that. Unless you read, unless you study, unless you uh, ask the questions, uh, you will not get clarified. So it is very important um, when you do the study or when you learn anything, you have to keep on asking questions and get clarified, get concept cleared. Okay? Please. Sir, um, how much do you think the oil price will increase sir, in the upcoming days? See, uh, due to this uh, scenario, uh, COVID-19 scenario, the entire world supply demand position is very very uh, is, is got affected drastically uh, so uh, we expect the prices crude oil prices will be in the range of 45 to 55 dollar per barrel we will not go more than that for the next one year or 18 months that is the prediction what we are discussing in the trading circle so uh, this will be the range because uh, the most of the industries are suffering most of the logistic movement or uh, the uh, air movement is uh, on hold. Industries are not running. Uh, transportation is slowly picking up. It's not only happening in India. It is all over the world. So 
unless and until there is a demand for the product, the prices will not go up. So there is a demand supply situation here today. So the prices will range, will be in the range of this $45 to $55 per barrel. So, so uh, what about the scope of the youngsters uh, for getting into a uh, uh, job? Will it be possible this with this uh, price range? No, at this stage, uh, most of the oil companies have the constraint to recruit the people, you know, uh, the youngsters. So that's why uh, the best way today, uh, why we ran this course, uh, because uh, uh, the uh, at this stage most of the people will not get the placement, so they at least they can upgrade themselves. Okay, they should get the maximum knowledge during this period. At least that is in our hand today, because uh, not only uh, the youngsters like you, but there are experienced people who have worked for 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years. They are sitting at home. They are not uh, so. Uh, there are not many projects. Everything is on hold. So, but such situation will not last in oil and gas sector always bounce back is within next one or two years always bounce back because oil and gas industry is such that you cannot uh, hold any uh, job uh, see for example uh, if you have the oil and gas uh, refinery uh, and in refinery you cannot um, uh, keep uh, quiet for doing any maintenance or doing any main, uh, 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 if any major issues are there uh, you have to replace or you have to do the complete revamping. So those projects uh, will have to take uh, uh, start coming up. Uh, and uh, uh, there are many, many big projects are planned already by oil companies in all over. Okay. For upgradation or for because most of the refineries are old. Uh, so uh, a lot of projects are there. So there's a huge scope. Another one or two years time. Uh, again, uh, this uh, scenario will change. Don't worry. Okay, sir. Uh, Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yeah, I'm Pallavi. I want to ask you one question, sir. As yes. we had a day today, upstream, midstream, and downstream, I want to ask that companies uh, overall are doing all the three activities together, or we can sort out companies with uh, upstream doing particular doing upstream job, a uh, company with only doing mainstream uh, contents, and other company with a downstream content. Yeah. See, as I explained to you, uh, see, what happened, uh, one organization doesn't take all these functions. See, for example, ONGC, I will tell you. See, ONGC is having the oil oil blocks, right? Okay. So they are the owner of the oil blocks. Okay. And what they do, they appoint the other companies to do the drilling operation. Uh, they will appoint some other company to the uh, uh, complete uh, engineering other, other so it is not one company there are all associated company are doing different different uh, jobs so uh, one single company don't take uh, the entire task hmm. uh, stream or up, upstream midstream or downstream only uh, there are uh, there are some companies like um, uh, will do uh, uh, midstream and uh, uh, downstream okay, okay. Uh, but all the three are uh, very difficult. Okay. So we have to sort it according to when we see for any company. So we have to now uh, sort according is it doing an upstream job or mainstream or downstream, right? Correct. Uh, so uh, you know their profile. Uh, uh, once, you, once you go through their profiles from the okay. website or uh, through your friends, uh, you know what is their specialty, whether they are upstream uh, expertise or midstream expertise or downstream expertise. Okay, so uh, accordingly, you have to select your career, whether you would like to go in upstream, midstream, or downstream. So we will be give, exchanging with you around 500 companies to you. Okay, uh, okay in that, all the companies' names are there, who are the upstream, midstream, downstream. Then uh, from now on, so uh, you can start uh, selecting, uh, then you, you can start sending your CVs for intern or for the uh, management trainees. Uh, most of the companies now online application they take. Okay, yeah. so that we will be guiding you during these uh, sessions. How to do that? Uh, how to approach interview? Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you. Last batch, uh, some student already got placed in Exxon Mobil and some other companies. Okay, in July we conducted online training 
and yes. based on that certificate they got full confidence and they got placed okay oh. so like this there are opportunities even covid 19 situation uh, they got the jobs it's not yeah. like that the, uh, uh, because uh, even covid 19 there are uh, old people are retiring okay mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they have to replace with somebody uh, and uh, nowadays uh, they they want cheap labor uh, cheap uh, people you know not labor cheap uh, uh, people uh, so they can train them by giving six months one one year training uh, mm -hmm. they understand the job particularly engineers have a high capacity to absorb any uh, knowledge or experience so uh, most of the companies appoint freshers also so you have good opportunity so basically we should have a good knowledge what is upstream midstream and downstream to apply exactly. yes that so you oh. see once you go through these uh, sessions uh, now uh, you will be in a, in a position to give the uh, uh, tell confidently what is upstream what is midstream what is downstream yeah yeah sure yeah yeah Once more onwards uh, we'll be going to downstream only completely so what is okay. refining in refining what are the plants uh, mm -hmm. which plant what uh, it produces you know mm -hmm. So you get you will get uh, in depth knowledge in addition to what you have studied in your colleges. You are yeah. studying uh, book knowledge, right? Exactly. So, huh, so here we are experiencing, uh, giving you our practical experience. Yeah. Now, practical experiences more than uh, uh, this thing. So this is what we have. Yeah. Thank so, you very much, sir. So within one hour or one and a half hour or two hours so, so far, uh, you could understand, right? Uh, uh, what is be upstream, midstream, downstream? So this is how uh, uh, these uh, experienced people can transform practical experience. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. I'm doing my petrochemical engineering. As yes. you said, uh, in the oil and gas field, every department has its own uh, opportunities, right? Like mechanical, civil, electrical. So what is the actual benefit for choosing petrochemical or petroleum engineering in the oil and gas field, sir? See, uh, see uh, what happened uh, when you enter in any oil and gas industry? Uh, see, even though you are a civil engineer, so mostly what happens, civil or mechanical, they will be placed in the projects, whereas you are a petrochemical engineer, you'll be placed in, say, drilling operation or in refining, like this. So uh, there is always a segregation at the entry level. Okay. So, but, but after five years or 10 years or 15 years, uh, it doesn't matter uh, what type of engineer you are. So you can go in anywhere. So this is how uh, it works. But initially, as a petroleum engineer, you will be 99% uh, you will be placed in the uh, the drilling operation or in the um, uh, midstream area or downstream area. So uh, it doesn't matter. Petroleum engineer, you have all the uh, subjects you have covered during your four years, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Once you enter in any oil industry, there is a different, different departments. After three, four years, uh, you will be playing in the pool of uh, different departments. They, they will not keep you in one department. You will be rotated. Okay. For example, I joined and I, I worked almost uh, in Hindustan Petroleum when I joined. I started my career in uh, supply operation, uh, three years. Then I went to terminals in refinery, in Mahul Refinery, Bombay for three years. Then again came back to uh, marketing and trading. So like this, uh, once you uh, enter, uh, they will mold you in all the departments. So they will make you a managers and future GMs. Okay. At entry level, only these issues are there. So they will, so three year, four year in one department, next department will be different like this. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Oh, hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Sir, most common interview question is who controls the oil prices? Who controls the oil prices? Yes, sir. So can See, you tell yeah. me? There is a OPEC, oil producing uh, uh, organization is there, OPEC, okay? So they control the, uh, uh, the production and the oil prices. And uh, they, there is a uh, proper system in place. All the oil producing companies are the members of OPEC, uh, okay? Under their guidance only, the production uh, is uh, 
uh, is controlled. Uh, daily crude oil production is controlled. Once you crude oil production is controlled, so OPEC is the body who controls the prices. However, the daily prices, uh, what you see fluctuation, it depends on the supply demand positions. Okay, sir, because uh, some of the websites think that the uh, OPEC countries are decide the price of crude oil, and some of the websites say the uh, action marketing is decide the crude oil price. Who? Action market. Action market, of course. Yes, yeah, that's sir. Why I say, you know, supply demand. See, supply demand, see, uh, if if you have the uh, huge requirement in, say, for in India, you are imp you have started importing uh, in line with the OPEC only, and uh, there is a huge demand of uh, crude oil, then naturally uh, prices will go up. If there is a big industrialization is happening in, say, China, so the crude oil intake is more. Uh, so if the crude oil intake is import is more there, that means uh, they are producing more. So why they are producing more? Because there is a high demand. Once there is a high demand, naturally their prices will be up. So always, uh, not only Asian, wherever, uh, if, if suddenly there is a, uh, a good uh, demand happening in US or in uh, Europe, uh, then naturally the price fluctuation will be there. The price, OPEC is uh, one, another is a plat, uh, is an international plat uh, is there, a plat publication they call. Under the plat, daily prices are derived based on various factors uh, like you are saying Asian demand supply as well as uh, if any war is there or if any uh, like uh, now COVID situation in COVID situation what has happened the entire market has crashed because there was no demand the entire uh, uh, world was standstill for uh, last five six months so the prices have gone to uh, minus five dollar ten dollar fifteen dollar you know which we have put to yes. during 70s or 60s. Now, uh, and we have, I have seen the prices up to 150 also. And today we are 30, 40 dollar, 50 dollar prices. So, always the, geography, this, um, the uh, situation, supply demand situation uh, plays a major role in pricing. Okay, sir, thank you. I want 71 questions because we have 71 participants. So I want 71 questions. Hello, sir. Good evening. Yes. Sir, I'm Prashant Kumar. First of all, I would like to thank you from all uh, from the all be uh, all on behalf of all to have uh, this beautiful presentation that uh, we have seen on Internet Expert. And uh, sir, I would like to ask a question. Uh, we have listener Tom. Wild, uh, wild cat well. So, can you please explain about the wild cat well? What is it? Wild cat well. Rajesh, explain to him. He is a drilling operation man. Rajesh, you are there. Hello. Yeah, I'm there. Hello. Yeah, just explain to him. You, I do. I want you to explain because young, you are a young man. Explain to this guy what is wild cat operation. Wild cat well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, what happened uh, when we start doing the survey? Uh, so this oil and gas operation, it start with the exploration part. So where we do the survey like physical exploration and so many techniques we use to deploy. Then we get a you know the physical data uh, where we uh, plot the maps and everything in the upstream part. So once this plotted, uh, you know we will be having the area, the location, uh, X Y Z location. So in this location it will be assumed that it may store oil and gas deposits okay but it is not 100 percentage confirmed so in that location you you know declare as a wild cat well the well which you dig first you know to drill the oil so it will be considered as a wild cat well so here it is not a, a exploratory well or like a, you know it is not a production well so that wells are entirely different the first well which you you drill so that location is declared as a wildcat. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank so you. It will be followed followed by you know the wildcat followed by the exploratory well. Then it will be followed by the commercial drilling well. Then it will go for the production process. Then supply to the terminals. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Is clear, sir. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Sir, I have one more question. Yeah. Sir, I, uh, as uh, like we have uh, experience in the oil and oil and gas sector, and uh, after four or five years, if we would like to establish some in uh, oil and gas industry, like uh, in which sector we can start with, like uh, upstream, downstream, upstream. Which which would be the better option for us? Yeah. See, uh, even even today, you are a fresh graduate. Even today, uh, you can start oil oil refine upstream, midstream, or downstream. But uh, you should have the uh, funding available. Yeah. Even if you want to start upstream operation today, take the oil blocks and exploration and drilling operation. Okay. Uh, okay. See, very important is uh, money. Money power is required. Okay. Yeah. See, uh, uh, the knowledge you can buy, right, from the outside. You can appoint the people, expert people, to manage the organization. Yeah. To, to appoint them, you should have the strong funding in your hand, right? So, yeah. so it's not uh, that uh, when you can do uh, either four year or five year or ten year. See, uh, these uh, uh, these areas like uh, midstream or uh, downstream or uh, upstream. You require huge uh, funding, millions of dollars. Okay, uh, so uh, very important. If you are a born businessman, uh, family, uh, you can talk to your uh, parents, prepare the plan. Uh, okay, I want to start the refinery. Uh, the this is the feasibility report. Uh, based on the feasibility report, say if you uh, if you say the project cost is say one billion dollar, and uh, normally if you want to start such type of project. At least you should have your own money at least twenty percent. Okay, so balance eighty percent you can get from the uh, from the bankers or from the private venture capitalists. So uh, because uh, oil industry has a big demand, big, big requirement. Okay, yeah. and, uh, there is always a product required. So it is a viable uh, project. So once the bank knows. Based on the feasibility report, they will grant you the loan. But the main is the initial seed capital of 20-25 percent. How you will raise? For that, you have to be a born uh, rich, or you have to have the good support from your parents or friends or from uh, somebody, right? Yeah. Because the remaining money you are taking from the bank, so the entire hundred percent, nobody will give you the loan, right? Thank you, sir. And it's a good vision. You want to start after five years also, but uh, instead of do that, you can start trading. Uh, trading operation you don't require that much huge capital, which I will explain to you during trading uh, trading session. I will explain to you. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes, please. Now I will name the Hello. name. Hello, sir. My name is Sirshad. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Sir, can you please explain the risk in the upstream, downstream, and midstream, sir? Like health issues and uh, etc. Uh, risk. Yes, sir. Related, risk. To, uh, related to health. Uh, health, uh, sir. See, uh, there are no uh, risk involved in uh, any because we worked in um, uh, all these areas, no. Because all the protections are taken place, there is a health and safety uh, is a very important in oil and gas sector. There is a special department that is called EHS, Environment, Health and Safety. So this particular department is uh, totally monitoring entire operation in upstream, midstream, and downstream. So there is a independent department. So, for example, uh, how um, uh, the uh, health care are taken, say, if any project is going on. So, in line with the project, uh, there are norms uh, how to uh, do the uh, project uh, planning and uh, how to uh, uh, the manpower has to be placed, where the material handling to be taken. So, all the trainings are given to the people who are on that particular project or in the uh, department. So, how to manage particularly uh, that particular refinery. Say, if, if somebody is sitting in the refinery unit, so how to manage that? So all the health and safety measures are, uh, uh, they have uh, trained, and then only these people are placed 
to work there. Otherwise, they are not fit to work there. So, oil and gas industry is totally uh, based on the uh, the training and skill development. Then only these people are assigned in particular department. So, these are the precautionary measures taken. The only trained people go the, and work there. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Even if you if you go today as a fresher, uh, they will not be allowed you to go to the uh, uh, any particular field area unless you have been given basic training. Okay, so how to enter into that area? Uh, where the hat? Where the safety shoes? Okay, oh, so okay. all the basic trainings are given. So the so your question uh, is answered. So there are no risk involved. The risk are mitigated. Okay. Okay, sir. Thanks, sir. Uh, yes. yes, please, Pallavi. Uh, sir, uh, again, I have a question. Like uh, you told about, you know, upstream is includes exploration and production, exploration, drilling, and production, right? Yes. So, what I'm going to ask is, exploration is a uh, wildcat well we found out as uh, ex what I ex got it, and when drilling is done, then production. I want to ask is, you said reserves are converted into cash, right? Yes. But uh, is it that direct uh, after upstream it is uh, the raw material has to follow that midstream, right? If I'm getting right. Yeah, yeah. See, what I mean to say, uh, converted into cash means your efforts got converted into cash. The efforts mm -hmm. is uh, you have done the exploration. You have spent huge money in uh, exploring. Uh, now mm -hmm. you have started drilling. There also you have spent a lot of money. You are yeah. spending, you're spending only. Uh, but uh -huh. after you started uh, getting the oil, uh -huh. this, uh, you are uh, lucky. Yeah. Uh, you are, uh, whatever investment you have uh, made, you start getting your cash return. Uh -huh. That is so the, it has to follow all the process upstream, midstream, no, and then? No, no. See, see for example, upstream, uh, one uh, company has taken the oil block, right? Yeah. So what they do? They will sell this crude oil to uh, midstream, okay, yeah. downstream, so they get their realization in advance before refining. Okay, yeah. Yes, so they will sell this crude to the, uh, th there are four four players I have explained to you. Yeah, NOC, major, uh, major the NOC. Yeah. So one part who is doing the production, X uh, company. So uh, they are selling this, as soon as they get the production, they will sell this crude oil to Y company. So they okay. get their money immediately. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Then what happens? That crude will be purchased by the refinery. Hmm. The midstream will purchase the crude, and then they will process it. And after okay. processing, they will get all the products like uh, naphtha, diesel, fuel, kerosene, and then they will get the cash out of that. They will realize their profit. Yeah. Okay. So Thank you, sir. each each layer have different uh, revenue model. Uh, upstream uh, have different revenue model, midstream have different, midstream what happen, they will also get the processing cost, storage cost, pipeline uh, yeah. cost, they will uh, also get that. So yeah. each and every stream have the revenue model. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. So yeah. what are the scopes of mechanical engineers in oil and, se oil and gas sector? Oil and gas sector, mechanical engineers have a huge scope because Without mechanical engineers, refinery or uh, drilling operation or structures, oil offshore industry, uh, you have huge, huge scope. Huge. So what job role they defined? Yeah. Uh, what uh, job role they get in the oil and gas sector? You can place in the projects. You can place in the uh, engineering and maintenance department. You can be placed in the even production areas. You can be placed in the uh, logistic supply logistic because storage uh, is managed by uh, mechanical engineers where you have to have the continuous repair maintenance uh, projects are coming up like fabrication installation pipelines you know so mechanical uh, role is uh, very high in oil and gas refining they have major uh, they are been uh, in, because every time there are projects maintenance work is going on okay so a mechanical engineer plays very good role Sir, why this uh, uh, crude oil is uh, found in only in Gulf countries and some specific places, not everywhere? 
because uh, that is the geogra geographical uh, uh, conditions of uh, that particular country so that is not in our hand that is a natural uh, uh, oil found uh, mostly in gulf uh, and it is explored okay i am saying explored now what is happening in new new areas in india also started uh, recently yeah. the government of india has already uh, allotted almost uh, many blocks in like gohati assam gujarat so india also started exploring earlier india was not investing in exploration they have started exploring now uh, in america if you see they have huge oil uh, found okay as compared to uh, gulf so once you start exploring for exploration you require huge capital huge money so now the countries are self sufficient so they started doing this that's why they started getting the more oil <coughs> thank you sir yeah sir adi i have one doubt uh, you recently said uh, in this pandemic situation uh, total oil and gas industries uh, fuel prices are totally uh, crashed but uh, in india why they are uh, reduced that uh, fuel price what behind it reduce or increase they are not reduce as much price sir yeah see indian pricing is different because uh, there is a formula price for india what happen uh, the taxation plays very high role in india that's why our prices are very high like gst mst and so many things almost uh, 33 34 40% prices are on the tax Uh, remaining are uh, the basic price so that is a big problem here uh, as compared to other countries they have less taxation you know like 5% 10% but india more than 30 40% taxation are there so that's why our prices are high okay sir hello sir yes sir when it comes to oil and gas field uh, whatever the videos we see and uh, what all the knowledge we get everything it seems to be a hardcore job right so they are uh, uh, what to say they are in their uniforms uh, they are taking the drill bits and fixing like that kind of stuff so uh, what is it what does it take to uh, work in an in an ac room like like that sir do you understand my question sir see i understood you so you are a, you are studying in which year now fine layer sir yeah so you are engineer right yes you are not supposed to do that job okay you are not on the ground level you are a supervisor okay 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 you will not be that is the only take, those are technicians who will be doing that uh, job okay okay sir your job is to do the supervising planning uh, and uh, uh, complete monitoring okay okay sir and designing so as a mechanical engineer or any engineer you are not allowed you will not be working uh, to lift the pipe or uh, uh, do the nut bolting and all uh, there is a different uh, category uh, like a diploma engineers or iit uh, uh, students uh, will be working in that area okay okay sir but but uh if you want to come up in your life uh if something goes wrong in any plant and if required you have to assist them also okay okay so we have to know everything yeah as an engineer yeah. you should know uh, and uh, see that is your expertise see yeah. uh, what happens a diploma or iti will have limited knowledge but you have you have different uh, additional expertise so you will be in a position to give a solution in a very short period Okay. Okay, sir. That is your expertise. So, uh, just you go and sit there. Oh, do like this, and uh, the the work will be fixed because you have better understanding as compared to them. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, what is the criteria or qualification to become a company man? to become a company man yes sir means as a as a entrepreneur or businessman uh no sir there is a job uh, like uh, like there is a job of a company man company like man. he is the 
he is a representative of a company which goes to the oil rig to uh, like uh, understand the production and uh, profits no no uh, that is called uh, the uh, uh, the department head you are talking uh, no sir actually uh, i am studying in msc petroleum technology in pune wadia college hmm so sir there is a job post known as company man uh, he is a representative of uh, third parties okay uh, so what happened they appoint him as a representative to manage the operation okay sir but what are the criteria to become a company man there no criteria uh, see any uh, graduate can work on that and he, he should have some experience uh, it doesn't require a mba right not required not required okay sir thank you see basic engineering knowledge is more than enough to represent any companies uh, so you will be working on their behalf so so what happened for example uh, in india say uh, there is a foreign company uh, like uh, say bp okay and they want somebody as their company man to represent in india right so uh, they will appoint you what they will see Uh, you are a graduate. Uh, you have uh, such type of experience. Uh, once you fit into their criteria, they will appoint you as a company man to represent the, the, on their behalf. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, so, sir. Good evening. Sir, can you explain the conflict between? US Russia and OPEC plus countries to determine the crude oil price i think that not the pandemic situation is not only the reason for drop in crude oil price the excess production of crude oil by them to occupy the crude oil to become crude oil thief uh, is the main reason for the drop in crude oil price see what happens So there is always a tussle between all these major oil companies, okay, oil, major oil, major uh, countries, uh, particularly political reasons, okay. So what happened? Uh, just uh, to give the threat, uh, they will start producing more and pump. Uh, that is called non-opaque oil, okay. So there, that's why the tussles are there. See, there is a body opaque body. Uh, see, for example, uh, if they have target to produce, let's say, hundred million barrels per month, and uh, each company has been given quota uh, okay you should run uh, you should do the production this much only uh, each country has a quota depending on their capacities and all so what happened here suddenly uh, the iran or america uh, or uh, ussr uh, will increase the crude oil production and they will supply to the market so that's why that imbalance is there in the price so that's why the, there is always a trend Because it is not hidden. So immediately, uh, people from uh, the entire world come to know that additional oil is pumped. So, uh, so this is this is all political. They just play uh, like a cat and uh, a rat case, you know. This will keep going until human being is there. That is that will be happening. Is clear? Yes, sir. It's clear, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. I'm Raghunath, and I'm a petrochemical graduate, uh, fresh air. Yes, Raghunath. Uh, sir, I, I have a, a very much interest in drilling, um, but uh, because I'm a fresh air, uh, around us, uh, my seniors and uh, colleagues are telling. Uh, getting a job in drilling uh, as a fresher is uh, not possible so try to work in uh, downstream for a uh, minimum 3 uh, to 5 years and and then apply for a job like uh, upstream then you will get uh, get it easily is it possible to get a job in uh, upstream after uh, i worked in mdsim sir see uh, yeah, today's conditions are different because uh, now upstream area a lot of uh, the production uh, got affected because there is no supply uh, there is no demand so that's why uh, the production and exploration is uh, not happening much for next at least uh, we don't know next four five years or what so but there are opportunities still because there are so many people are redundant or retiring 
So you may get some opportunities in uh, upstream. Uh, so we'll give you the name of the companies. You try there. Uh, and uh, otherwise, if you get somewhere in oil industry, midstream or downstream, join there. And then uh, you can come back anytime to that uh, upstream area. Okay. Yeah, so okay, at this stage, in this situation, whatever uh, job you get in oil industry, you accept. So there is a, uh, you can change uh, later stage. There is no issues. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So I think uh, there are no more many questions huh, now. So we'll. Uh, Can you speak loudly? Electrical vehicle. Ha, electrical vehicle. Ha, production is uh, slightly improving, uh, growing, sir. Uh, yeah, it will, it, it will grow, but you know, there is a huge How? gap. There is a huge gap of uh, oil versus electrical and uh, gas. Because uh, it will take another 50, 20, 25 years to reach to uh, that level. So it doesn't make much difference. It will take a long time. Without oil, uh, it's very difficult because we are still depending on oil uh, more than 60 70 percent. Okay. So to bring to that level, it will take a long time. It will not happen overnight. It takes time. Because we don't have that in that type of infrastructure. It is very difficult to change infrastructure to meet the electrical requirement, you know. Hello. Yes. Hello. Sir, I have yes. a question. Suppose if a person uh, wants to take uh, oil blocks on lease from government. Okay, sir. Yeah. Then uh, uh, there is a procedure which includes the site surveys. So yes. what uh, those site surveys include? Uh, what do they have to do in survey? And what they have to check? See, site survey is a complete uh, uh, in a start from oil uh, testing to the uh, suspect and a lot of studies are required. Okay. So, uh, there is a detailed uh, discussion on this. We will explain to you during the uh, dealing operation process. Uh, we will okay. cover all these things. And uh, see, if you want to take the oil block, there is a good, very good uh, system which uh, we will explain to you uh, okay, sir. how to acquire blocks. That is all procedure. Hmm? It's all procedure. Yeah, entire procedure we can explain. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir, what would be the role of an instrumentation engineer in the oil and gas sector? Without instrumentation engineer, refineries cannot work. Oil industry cannot work. Because uh, each and everywhere, uh, all the instruments are there. So you have, the instrument engineer has to, uh, to make sure uh, all the instruments are working in a proper condition, you know. So it's a very good role uh, as an instrumentation engineer in oil and gas sector. Yes, a lot of instrument engineers are required. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Uh, this is Benny here. Yeah. So on uh, upstream, downstream, and midstream, uh, which uh, segment will have the most profit? Uh, most profit area will be. Uh, this um, uh, will be in refining, okay? Because what happened, uh, refining uh, the margin-based, continuous flow. Whereas uh, what happened in us upstream, there is always a up and down in the pricing and all these things. There is a huge operation, regular, a lot of expenses are there. So uh, as compared to upstream, midstream, uh, the refining gives the better margins. So, sir, uh, how do they balance that out? Because uh, 
the searching is obviously a very uh, important aspect because uh, and they go through a lot of effort in finding this and all that so if they are not able to get uh, appropriate profit as to how much they should be getting how do they balance it? no that's why it is a complex process no so uh, you have to balance if there are various mechanism to balance it okay uh, so See, you have to buy uh, if you if you if you are coming to downstream, uh, uh, and if you want to process the crude, uh, you have to make sure you buy uh, the uh, mixed blend of crude, like uh, light crude, medium crude, or heavy crude. Do the blending and process it. So your cost of production is less. So you maximize your uh, revenue mar margins. Uh, so this is the one thing. Uh, second uh, will be uh, the yield. Uh, you can play the yield with the uh, yield. So you try to maximize the yield where which gives the more pricing. So yield means production of uh, the finished products like LPG, naphtha, gas oil, fuel oil. So uh, there are various mechanisms to maximize uh, revenue. Okay, it is a uh, the complex process, uh, but uh, all the time uh, you don't get that uh, what uh, refinery margin what you are targeting because. The market is such; uh, it's a volatile market. So most of the uh, refineries are uh, really uh, finding difficult times nowadays. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. I am chemical engineer student finally, sir. Yeah. Sir, um, foreign companies, uh, foreign oil and gas companies can take a pressures uh, or not uh, experience uh, guy. Yeah, they take pressures as a management trainee. They take pressures. So how to approach this, sir? How to approach? See, you visit their website, okay? And uh, there is a job portal. You download your CV, and uh, every year they appoint. For example, uh, last batch. They picked up uh, uh, Exxon Mobil has picked up some girls and boys. Okay, sir. Yeah, sir. Uh, and um, another question, sir. What role of chemical engineers in midstream process, sir? Yeah, midstream process chemical engineer is, uh, is having the huge uh, role because uh, when the crude comes from the uh, uh, the uh, from the production area, it is happening in midstream as a processing. Okay, so processing. Uh, the chemical engineer also plays very good role here. No? Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Sir, being a petrochemical engineer again, uh, people always say that it's a wide scope and uh, it's a wide department. I can go anywhere, like uh, the fertilizer department, uh, yes. the chemicals, the pharma, the oil and gas, anywhere. Yes. So at last, I end up get confused. So, what idea should I hold on to, sir? You have to focus. That's why this this particular course will give uh, to oil and gas focus. That's why we have uh, designed this course in such a way that at the end of the course session, you you will find your way. Okay. 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 Sir. Thank you. Sir. Did I see that? Sir. Yes, please. Sir, I have a question. Yeah. Sir, how to start a business in uh, downstream marketing and retail? Yeah. Like you know, uh, a petrol pump. Yeah. Petrol very yeah. easy. Petrol pump. Uh, see, you get the uh, all the oil companies give the advertisement in the uh, newspaper as well as on the their websites. So you apply. You get. As a fresher, also you can get the petrol pump. So, what is the eligibility criteria for that? Nothing. Even tenth uh, uh, or twelfth uh, or uh, anybody can get the petrol pump. There is not a problem. Okay. See, basically, you have to have the land. Uh, and yeah. um, even if you don't have your own land, you can lease the land. Okay. Yeah. You can take on rent, and uh, you require uh, see. Uh, if you have the capital of, uh, say, if you have the lease land, uh, maximum 50 lakhs or 80 lakhs, you can start your petrol pump. Okay, sir. 
sir but it should be on the uh, road side or highway or yeah the location should be good not only road side even if it is in the city and yeah. it is a crowded area uh, mm -hmm. so it depends on the location that's why uh, before uh, they give the uh, advertisement in the newspaper uh, location wise okay yeah. so you have to select proper location where you can maximize your sale see this is the volume game petrol pump is a volume game if you sell more then only you get good commission it is on a per liter commission you get okay so uh, maximum sale maximum revenue so with this i think uh, we we we, uh, we have uh, so many sessions going on in future we will answer your all the questions huh yes pallavi yes sir uh, as, uh, yeah i just uh, ask a small thing that in a downstream we have we are uh, we, are, we have been told that selling refined products but if someone th is a uh, thinking for a small scale industry right so can uh, that uh, he can uh, manufacture uh, uh, some uh, refined uh, products using um, you know i want to say like yes yes, yes. see yes. for example kerosene uh, uh. from kerosene you can get lot of uh, other chemicals those chemicals uh. are required in food industry and other industries uh, then uh, if you set up some small unit uh, mm. uh, take the fuel stock as kerosene or naphtha okay, okay. and then uh, you can derive some petrochemicals out of that and hmm. those chemicals you can sell to different industries so yeah. always uh, 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 that's why on oil and gas there are many industries that are working thousands of industries uh, uh -huh. small small manufacturing units are there uh -huh. okay so the what is the fish stock fish stock is um, naphtha kerosene or okay. mpg so uh, uh, no no and also bitumen damper ah uh, bitumen also you uh, you can have the bitumen unit you can mm -hmm. uh, make lot of uh, bitumen uh, products uh, for the road construction and uh, real estate so uh -huh. various products you can manufacture for roofing you know uh, the roofing yeah. kits are there mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> water proofing so uh, there are many uh, business opportunities are there yeah okay if you want to start yeah thank you sir Good evening, sir. I am doing the petrochemical technology. Yeah. Uh, where do I have more scope? Either in upstream, downstream, or uh, middle stream, sir. The major scope will be in, uh, of course, downstream because uh, here uh, huge amount of people are working. There is a good scope in downstream. Uh, so, uh, so try to get into downstream, but doesn't matter. You once you enter into any uh, area, there is a scope to go divert your uh, this thing. As an engineer, you can work anywhere. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sir. See, don't restrict to your only to downstream. If you get in midstream, join there. Okay. Okay, sir. okay i think uh, we'll uh, now i just want to tell you uh, on daily basis uh, whatever we cover uh, you have to uh, prepare your assignment okay daily assignment that is called whatever topic we have covered uh, so you have to write a brief note your understanding on the today's topic it is compulsory yeah you have to up, up on, because we will be issuing the certificate at the end of uh, the session from our Abu Dhabi and uh, UAE uh, companies. So this is a very good uh, certificate to show uh, to go for any interview. Okay, so where you got the internship, so you can say this is engineering companies from Abu Dhabi or UAE. So you will be uh, uh, you will have more credits. Okay, so uh, if you don't complete this assignment, I will not give the certificate. I am telling you, the daily you have to upload your uh, daily assignment in the. Google folder already created. 
So have you gone through those uh, Google folders? Yes, sir. Have you checked? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So daily upload it, uh, and what we will do, we will uh, at the end of all the sessions, you have, uh, we will give the project format. So whatever you topics you covered during uh, from day one until last, uh, all the topics you have to prepare the project summary. Okay, these are the projects. These are the topics I have covered. What is your understanding? We will give the format. So all the topics. This will be very important. You will not get anywhere in the world. Uh, all these segments, you know, refining, uh, reservoir simulation, drilling operation, uh, mechanical design, as well as uh, structural engineering. Uh, nowhere, nobody will give you in 50, 18 days, 36 hours, uh, this much knowledge. So, deep, deep focus. You will learn a lot in these sessions. Okay. So, uh, and submit your session uh, assignment daily. Uh, once you finish today. Try to submit tomorrow. It's, it will take hardly half an hour to uh, sit down and write, uh, type, and uh, upload. Okay. Then every week uh, on Saturday, he give us the feedback uh, uh, if, about uh, the mentors. If, or even during the session also, if you don't like anybody, anything wrong or anything, if you want something more, you just express. So it is a continuous process. Okay. So don't wait until last sessions. Don't, I, we don't want any complaint and we laugh. Whatever you have raised, whatever is there, you speak freely here in the group. Okay? We are all, uh, even though we are industry people, but I would like to consider you as our, we are, we are friends. Okay? So it's clear? Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, can you make, uh, can you clear, make, give us a clear view on how to submit, uh, what to submit on that assignment, sir? I like, told you, uh, no. We should type oh, it or write example. it or what content yeah. should be there. Yeah. For example, I have given you today uh, upstream, midstream, downstream. Okay. So you have to just, uh, there is a format already uploaded uh, uh, on internship format is there. And that format is just right there. You are understanding on the topic. That's all. What do you understand about what is our upstream? What is midstream and what is downstream? What is your understanding? Okay, so uh, I will be sharing this PPT also. Okay, so you can um, refer this PPT as well as through uh, your books or internet. You will uh, read and just put only one or two paragraphs, not theory. Okay, just understanding of what you understood. That's all. Not not waste much time. Just during the today's session, you understood a lot of things, right? So you just write down on the paper. So we have to write down on a paper and take snaps and upload it on the Google folder. No, no, no. You better you type, better you type, because uh, if you upload, it will be clear okay. in the system because this will be permanent. And where is it in the Google folder? In the Google Drive, it will where, be permanent. Where is it Google? It's already created. Already created. And this uh, our uh, coordinators will uh, advise you how to do that. Huh? Okay, sir. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, they will guide you. Yeah. There's a complete system is created. Okay, even uh, we will be pay, uh, posting uh, this our daily PPT in my mentor. There are the folders created, three folders uh, in Google Drive. One is a uh, students, individual folders are there. Then uh, mentors like uh, me, uh, we have five mentors. Then um, coordinators. So. In mentor format, you can see our uh, PPT, daily PPTs, for your reference. And then your individual folders, you can upload your daily assignments. Okay? And uh, uh, see even that PPT also, you can save and uh, put in your uh, folder, no problem. That's clear now. I think uh, with this, uh, we'll close the session. And uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, participation. I hope... Uh, uh, you like the session today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It is very Thank nice. Thank you, sir. 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 Good night. Good night, sir. Good night. 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 Good night.